Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. We head to Blacksburg, Virginia, where we catch up with Virginia Tech big man. He's originally out of Cleveland, Ohio. He's found his way to one of the top programs in the country. He joins us today, Ty Walls. Ty, how are you? I'm doing great, Scott. How are you? I'm good. It was great to see you. Great to see your father, uh, other members of your family there in Atlanta, Georgia, at, at uh, Georgia Tech. Talk to us a little bit about, uh, first of all, accepting the invitation. How were you notified that uh, you had the possibility of wrestling in that event? Um, well, I was training at Virginia Tech all summer and at the regional training center and just doing my own thing. And I'd walk into to the locker room every day, and Dresser would be in his office, and he'd tell me, like, hey, I think you might be up for this all-star thing. And every day it seemed like whoever I was wrestling and if I was in it or not would change. And, I mean, I, I was wrestling the same guys all summer, so I was really eager to try and wrestle somebody different and, and get the season started as early as it possibly could. So um, eventually he told me it was locked in, and I was wrestling Adam Coon, and I couldn't be more excited because I knew I could make an exciting match. And, it would be fun. So I was look, I've been looking forward to it, and I was happy to do it for like four months all summer. That's all I thought about, so it was great. So let's talk a little bit about the height difference. You're, you stand at about what, six, six one? Uh, six foot, yeah. Okay. And did, say it again, six foot? Yeah, six foot. Okay. And Adam's about six three, six four. There's a height difference. There's a reach difference. You uh, absolutely closed that off. You you went inside. You You hooked up. You... You brought the battle right to him. Talk a bit about that. There seems to be a bit of a change in, in your stance, uh, how you're attacking from last year to this year. Can you talk to us about that? Um, well, I, I, I had a big focus this summer on, on maintaining my speed and, and making sure I was fast as well as being strong. And it definitely changed my wrestling. I, I drill with smaller guys all the time. I like drilling with smaller guys because they move faster and more dynamically, so I think that definitely affected my wrestling significantly. Um, uh, I'm used to staying in a low stance. Coach Dresser always preaches stance, so uh, I'm, I'm constantly low. It's easier for me to be lower. I have a pretty low center of gravity, and it, it's it's definitely a focal point in most of our practices, so it, it helps me, especially when I wrestle taller guys. All right, so what you hear coaches talk about is don't bulk up too much in the weight room, okay? Now... <laughs> I want you to do me a favor. Move over just a little bit. I want you to give me a bicep shot, a full bicep shot, okay? <laughs> I want, and, and I got a question to follow this, so give me a bicep shot for the camera, okay? All right. Right now? All right. Okay. Now, that is not... <laughs> That is not typically endorsed by a head coach saying, gosh, if you bulk up, you're going to be a lot more flexible. Okay. <laughs> you, sir, are exceedingly flexible, even though you are massive in size. And uh, I talked to Coach Dresser about your workout regimen, and he says that you go into the air-conditioned weight room, and you have to literally wring out your shirt three, four, five times during a, uh, a, a regular weight training session. Describe for us what you do to get as big and cut and ripped as you are right now uh, in, a, in a weight training session because it's got to be intense. Um, well, sometimes it feels like all the hard work goes to waste when you when you go to wrestling practice and lose 8 or 10 pounds. And, uh, but we have a world-class weightlifting coach, and, and we go – I mean, I, I feel like I kind of an advantage because I love lifting, and most of my other teammates do too, and, and we go in there pretty amped up every day and – we get a good warm up before, and we usually run, do some stadiums, and then then we go in and we lift for an hour and a half to two hours, depending on our uh, our pace for that day, of course. But um, you know, we have a blast with it. We always have great energy when we go in there, and, and we love eating too. Especially me and the other heavyweights, we 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 definitely spend a significant amount of our money on food, <laughs> and that's and that's part of it, of course. Big guys like you, you would think uh, just eat a lot of red meat. You are pretty smart in how you eat. There's dietitians, I'm sure, that are assisting you in deciding what it is, uh, teaching you, teaching your body how to uh, adjust to what you're eating and getting the most out of it. What's an average uh, day look like for you as far as food intake? Um, it'd be really convenient if I could have some chicken, like a chicken coop by my house. Because uh, <laughs> I, I, my mom has one. She lives in North Carolina and she has a chicken coop and they eat a ton of eggs. So whenever I go there, it's pretty nice because I spend a ton of money on eggs. I don't usually, I eat like six to eight of them after practice in the morning. 
And then uh, after my afternoon practice, I I always have either chicken, pork, just because they're a little bit cheaper. And turkey burgers are huge now because they're they're pretty good for you. They're lean. There's a ton of protein in them. And then um, oatmeal every single day, absolutely. Oatmeal in the morning with a ton of peanut butter in it. I love peanut butter. I put it on pretty much everything. Um, but I mean, a part of it's just being surrounded by guys that also want to eat healthy. Uh, my roommates tonight, Sal Mastrani and Cam Bowen, they, we kind of like competed. We wanted to be the most ripped household on our team and we definitely accomplished that, but we would, we would literally like sabotage each other. We try and make each other eat unhealthy. So like if we knew Sal was going out one night and he was coming back, we would literally, we would put cheese fries in his room. So he would eat them when he came back so we could sabotage like his gains and stuff like that. But, uh, we, we've gotten really competitive as a house, just, just trying to see who could eat healthier and and see who could get the most jacked. And I think that that's you have to have fun with it because eating healthy isn't always the most fun thing to do. So it's nice when. Let's go back to peanut butter for minutes. Are we talking Jif or Skippy? Oh, uh, actually, Kroger brand. Kroger brand. The cheapest. <laughs> the cheapest. Okay. All right. So let's say Kroger brand. Is it chunky or smooth? Uh smooth. Mm. Absolutely. Okay, but no butter. Uh, no, no butter. I usually put honey in it. And if I could afford almond butter all the time, I would totally buy almond butter instead because it's so good. <laughs> it's very good. You're right. Okay, now I'm getting hungry. Uh, we're talking with Ty Walls. Your father asked me to do something different at the All-Star Classic. He asked me to introduce you with your full name, and you're named after your grandfather. Tell everybody your full name. Uh, Ty Ryan Jack Walls. So... Uh, my dad's weird. He has two middle names as well. His middle names are actually John Wayne, which is kind of cooler than mine is. But um, I, I'm actually named after Ty Cobb and Nolan Ryan. And then they gave me Jack as well after my grandpa, who recently passed away last May. Um, I knew my dad had something to do with it when he announced me as uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan Jack Walls. I knew immediately. I was like, oh, my dad, I knew you talked to him or something like that. But uh no, it was great. It definitely fired me up, and it, it's always good to give the uh, old man a shout out, of course. You, uh, you, it's it's odd. You're the first guy I've ever known, and uh, we know each other pretty well. But you're the first guy I've ever known that's actually named after the Georgia Peach, uh, the uh, one of the meanest men that's ever played the game of baseball. <laughs> no, um, I actually, whenever I tell people that I'm named after Ty Cobb, they're like, "Oh, really?" Like. He wasn't the nicest guy here. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't know why my dad named me after him. But I, I do like the name, but I guess it's not like the best origin to uh, come from. But I, I actually have I, a picture of Ty Cobb hanging in my theater room with Judge Landis. And uh, Judge Landis is one of the only guys that would talk to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm glad I could be a little bit more personable and nicer than he was. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, I wish you really, really well in your holdings with Coca-Cola. If you're anything like Ty Cobb, I remember when... Uh, in the movie Cobb, he uh, made a phone call to his broker and said, buy all the Coca-Cola stock you can. The broker said, why? <laughs> he said, because tomorrow they're announcing they're coming out in cans. <laughs> and he, just, he, he made it mint overnight. Ty Cobb, very brilliant. But, yeah, not a not a, uh, a, a well-liked guy in the world of baseball. Tough guy, for sure. Um, but Nolan yeah. Ryan, I think you saved the day on that one. And then, of course, Grandpa. Yeah, yeah. Too. Nice. <laughs> no, you cannot go wrong with that. All right, so if, if um, you have a match tomorrow, okay, and the match is against Iowa State, and last year – I believe Iowa State won over you guys, and they're currently ranked 13th in the country. You guys are ranked 6th. Um, not going to ask you to predict anything, but you're set to face Quan Smith uh, at heavyweight, and I'm not exactly sure how this uh, match is going to start, whether or not it's going to be a traditional start at 125 or not, but you've got to be ready to go no matter when they call you out, right? Yeah, Absolutely. Talk to us about uh, getting ready to face Quan Smith because his body style, his wrestling style, and, and, and everything is almost uh, exactly opposite of Adam Kuhn. Yeah, um, yeah. Luckily, my training partners in the room are all different shapes and sizes. So, I mean, from from a go to go basis, I could change from wrestling a guy who's six four to a guy who's who's five nine. I'm pretty used to changing it up, and obviously, he's, he's completely a different shape than Adam Kuhn and. He's he's significantly heavier and shorter, so uh, that's something that I'm gonna have to adapt to. But uh, I'm pretty confident in myself to get to my shots and my offense, and and uh, 
and that's the plan. It'd be like going from wrestling a, a log, a tall log, to going to wrestle a ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more more like a bolt, I would say. Yeah, it's just hard <laughs> to get your arms around. And uh, then again, he's got to face you. So I got to believe that you'll be bringing the game much like you did with, with Adam Kuhn. You'll be bringing your game to play and he'll need to be responding to what you're doing on the mat. That's perhaps uh, your greatest asset as I see it right now, uh, as I've talked to the coaches, that you're forwarding your match and your style into it. You're making that a powerful statement. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think... Uh... Uh, at St. Ed's, my high school, we always had a thing called Oppose Your Will. And it was goofy. We'd give out like a t-shirt every week of the guy who did it. And uh, the first, my first actual match at, at the, on the, like the starting team, I did really well. And I, they gave me the, the IYW t-shirt, the Impose Your Will t-shirt. And that's, I guess, something that kind of stuck with me. As goofy as it was, it, it's, it's a good mentality to have go out there and wrestle because uh, – Wrestling your style is important, and forcing it upon your opponent is, is is what's going to allow you to go to the get to the highest level. And I think that's something that I've always done, as goofy as it is. <laughs> Wayne Wayne Boyd, also from uh, Virginia, uh, coincidentally, I realized you're originally from Cleveland, but he was a Virginia boy now living in L.A. and and he has something he puts on every bit of clothing from Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, and that is W I T. It's what it takes. Seems to me you're doing everything that you need to do. You're doing what it takes. Is that a fair uh, description? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, I wouldn't call it sacrificing very much cause I'm doing what I love. And you know, I like putting in the hours. I like get, working out and, and wrestling. It's my life. And so I wouldn't say I'm sacrificing, but yeah, I'm definitely doing what it takes. And if, if I could say your goal is to win the conference and then go on to end uh, the season at Madison square garden, in March, uh, facing whoever you face, um, let's say it's Nick, uh, but ending up down the, uh, or in New York City on that mat, would you say the, the assumption is that you want to be that NCAA champ? Absolutely. I've, I've said it more than I've ever said it before, and I'm going to be an NCAA champ, and I feel great just saying it, and I, I like it. Uh, I tell all my friends, I, I talk to my girlfriend about it every night when I go to sleep. I'm just like, oh, man, I can't wait for NCAA. I can't wait for, for March so I can finally accomplish the goal that I've been talking about. And, uh, yeah, it's great. And and I know that all, all it takes is one good tournament in March, and I'm going to do everything that I need to do this year to, to get ready for it. And it started last weekend, and I'm building – I'm just rolling it all up into – into a nice five month long season until March and and hopefully it all builds up and, and it's worth it in the end. I'm sure you've done your homework on your head coach, Kevin Dresser, of course, out of Humboldt, Iowa, the home of one Frank Gotch, uh, largely regarded as one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of the sport. Um, but have you done your homework on the two new guys, Derek St. John and Mike Zach, new guys on your staff? Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually a big fan of both. They're, they're, uh, they're, pretty unique and they bring a completely different flavor level of toughness uh just everything to our room uh, i'm definitely seeing a lot more camo than i'm used to but you know they're, they're great guys they're both they're both fun to be around they bring a certain type of energy and toughness to the room that's unparalleled and it's great i i've noticed differences in our team already and Although our practices are significantly harder and longer, they're they're worth it because guys are noticing it, and 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 everybody on our team up and down the lineup can can tell you that, yeah, it's harder, but we know we're going to the next level. And our our theme this year as a team was raising the bar, and those two guys are bringing are raising the bar for us. Let me ask you this: Do you only hope you could grow a beard like my Zadik can, or honestly, like they keep changing all these rules for folk style to try and make it more entertaining? I really wish they would just change the the shaving your face rule. If if I could grow a beard, I think, you know, there'd be no no doubt about it. I'd be a national champ right now because <laughs> it's just like an intimidation factor. And I know I could grow a really nice beard. I try and bring it out in freestyle season, but um, yeah. Uh, he's been growing his for three years. That was probably the first thing I asked him when he when he came to Tech, and I was astonished by the the sight and the smell of it. It's amazing. <laughs> It's Tywell's bringing it. So Zadik and St. John, good additions to uh, the program, joining some very experienced coaches for sure. Dresser is uh, 
been one of the great teachers our sport has ever uh, ever enjoyed. I don't think we say enough good things about him. But uh, we're surely uh, keeping our eye on you, Ty, Ryan, Jack Walls, and uh, awful grateful for the performance that you and Adam Kuhn put together for the All-Star Classic kicking off the season. Our best of luck to you as you guys get ready to face Quion Smith. Final question, how good is Nick Bruschetta? Uh, he's very good. Um, oh, man, I had a, um, I was thinking about the other day how I would describe him because he's an awesome leader too. I think of him as like a, uh, like a Bill Belichick. I feel like Bill Bel Bill Belichick is kind of like a jerk, but he's a fantastic leader. So that's probably how I'd describe Nick Bruschetta. <laughs> I will bring I that up. Like the, I'll bring that up to Coach Belichick. I'm sure it's not the first time he's heard it, but he's an interesting <laughs> character in a tremendous interview. I got to tell you that. All right, you know what? I said that was going to be the last one. As long as I'm asking you opinions, Joey Dance. Um, ridiculous athlete. Um, completely changed his whole. Uh, game around this year. He's taking really great care of himself. It's unbelievable. Um, oh man, I just I hope they don't start at 125 at NCAs, or I'm not going to be able to be the uh, first national champion of Blue Tech because he's he's definitely going to do it. He's amazing, isn't he? He's phenomenal. Yeah, I I learn a, t a thing or two from him every time he wrestles. Sal, I just wish I was at it. Sal Mastriani. He's my roommate. Uh, one of the best friends I've ever had at Virginia Tech. Oh my God, he's he's inspiring just to watch him around the house. How good he takes care of himself is crazy. Um, uh, he he's someone who completely changed around his whole life. He every everything he puts in his body, everything he eats, when he works out, how he works out is completely changed. He he's a leader for my for me, and it, uh, I learned a lot from the kid just growing up. He's the toughest dude I've ever met in my life. I like I, and and I'll throw in one more number four ranked. In the country, uh, Zach Epperly. Uh, he used to be my roommate, but um, <laughs> um, oh, uh, a great friend. Him and I are actually in the same major, so I get the honor of going to class with him all the time. Uh, also in the same athlete. I don't know what they do at Christiansburg High School, but they just breed ridiculously strong, crazy athletes. And Epperly is another guy who. You know, if they start at 174 for the for the NCAA tournament or at and for the NCAA finals, then he's going to be the first national champion. He he's got it going on right now. He's really good. You guys are fired up, aren't you? We're so excited. We've been beating the heck out of each other for the past five six months since NCAA has ended. So we're really excited to finally take it on with somebody else. I love it. Ty, it's always good to talk to you, brother, and I appreciate the time today. Again, thanks for starting the season off with so much uh, style and, and just brute force, man. You look good out there, and, and uh, I think the entire country is going, hey, hey, hang on just a second. This Ty Wall's pretty darn good. Well, I think we've known it for a while, and now we're starting to see it. We love it. Appreciate the time today. Our thanks to Kevin Dresser. You've been in the Nike hot seat. I forgot to tell everybody that at the very beginning, but they helped to make these interviews possible. Was it a comfortable chair to be in? Yes, I love it. Hopefully I could be here again soon. Oh, absolutely. Ty, anytime. I sure appreciate the time today. Best of luck uh, for you, your squad against uh, uh, the Cyclones of Iowa State, and we'll look forward to seeing what comes up next within conference play as well, okay? Great. Thank you very much. I'm Scott Casper. Our guest today, Ty Walls. This has been Takedown.